We are creating some fonts today using FontSelf. It is an app on the iPad that I had to pay $20 for at the beginning of 2025. I've tried a lot of the free font apps out there and I realized that they were kind of limited in the things that I wanted to do. This app works with Vector, which I love. And so I figured that this is a great opportunity to kind of learn this app as well as do a quick overview of this application as I am learning it myself. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and dive right in and I'll show you exactly all the things that I've learned so far on this app. We have Font Self open. And this is what it looks like once you're in. It has a couple templates here. We have the hand curl script, goth, and so forth. It also has some templates where you can play around with and not have any already pre-written letters on the background. I'm gonna go ahead and click on one just to show you what it looks like. And here we see that it has all of the letters and then we also have the settings that you could play around with. I actually like having the cells so that you could compartmentalize each letter. And then we have the grid so you could actually see um, a little dots along that little box that you have. That way you kind of could tell where you want to place all of your letters if you want it to be a certain size. Um, you know, things like that. So here's the settings that I have on my app when I'm using it. A couple things on this. If you've used Procreate or Adobe Fresco, this, so this is similar in Procreate as when you're, say, writing a letter and you want to undo something, you could tap with two fingers and it's going to undo that. So let's go up to the top. The top, uh, the first one is like a little section a selection tool. We also have the drawing tool and it gives you different brushes. We have the brush, the pencil, the pen and so forth. You could also play around with the sizes kind of similar to Procreate or even Adobe Fresco. So go ahead and make sure that you play around with this to determine what kind of settings that you um, are looking for in terms of your font. We also have the eraser which you could do. I love having this trim strokes on because without it it makes it look a little wonky when you are erasing but when you do the trim stroke trim strokes on it kind of brushes it off really softly so it's really nice especially if you're trying to trim things up like in procreate if you hold down your pencil it's going to create a straight line for you so again let's do that again so if you press down and you hold it down it's going to create a straight line for you and say that we want to play around with just the strokes. Since this is a vector, you could see that you could play around with each of the strokes. I've clicked on it and you could actually move your move all of your strokes around. But if you also click on these three dots, it's going to show you all of the vector points. So you could actually play around with the points as well, which I think is pretty cool. You could also highlight some if you want to combine. And then it becomes like two. Isn't that cool? Anyways, so you could play around with that. You could also play with this one right here. I don't even know what the word is, but if you click on that, this no longer is a line. It's like becoming an outline of the actual thing. So you could play around with that if you wanted to change the thickness. And the eraser could erase everything up for you. So let's start and go ahead and create a template. We're going to make all of the alphabet letters. One of the cool things about this feature is that even with the circle, you'll see that it's going to smooth out the line. But also if you had like a wavy line like this, it's going to smooth that out too. So I think that's pretty cool in terms of creating um, different stroke patterns and just like fun glyphs. They're called glyphs. So those fun items, if you wanted to try that too, you could definitely give that one a try. So here I could see that I wanted to make my C a little bit longer. Or, so I could adjust that just like so and maybe even make it wider. I think I like it like that too. All right, so let's go ahead and start. We'll continue with our lettering. Now, once you go all the way, you have lowercase, 
You have uppercase, lowercase, and even the numbers. You could play around with the globe so that you could have different settings. There's uh, the basic glyph range, and you have the extended so that you have additional um, additional glyphs. You could also have different languages, and the more you click, the more items you have to fill out. Uh, let me show you a font that I've already created. This is a font that I have recently created uh, using this app and it's just been so fun to do. Uh, once you are done with your font, you want to make sure that you name it, but also you could click on this type and showcase. And basically it'll show you exactly what your font looks like. So if even if you wanted to create something with it, it's so fun to see your uh, font out in real life. I also made it only uppercase so you don't you see that the lowercase isn't really filled out here. Okay, so once you are ready to have this font, we're going to go and click on the export button and you could export this and I am going to export it down to my computer. So this is going to save as an OTF file so that you could actually use it on Adobe Illustrator or any of your other platforms that you use. You could even use it in Procreate or other apps on your iPad as well. I've now uploaded all of my fonts onto my computer and take a look at exactly what it looks like when I put it into Adobe Illustrator. And I also think that it'd be kind of fun to put this on a photo frame and just see what it actually looks like once it's engraved or scored on an actual physical piece. So a little adjustment here, we'll do XOXO min family and we'll get this engraved. A little moment of truth, here's what it looks like when I actually scored our little piece. I realized that with the engrave it was really thin so I think the score piece actually looks a lot better. So take a look, this is my exact font that I created on the font app and I was able to recreate it on to my design. Um, this is a photo frame that I created for all of my little Instapix photos because we've been taking a lot of these photos and I don't know what to do with them so I figured we'd create a little frame for them, created multiple different sizes and now I could actually customize it with my own font. I'm so blown away by the fact that we're actually able to make my font. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial of font self. It's been pretty fun to use. I've only had it for a couple days now. I realized there wasn't that many tutorials so I wanted to go and give it a shot and also provide a little run through of what the program does. That way if anyone else is in the same boat as I am they could do and create a lot of fonts as well. I am just so pleased with how it came out. This is so beautiful and I just can't believe that this is actually my font. I've also created other fun fonts too, so I'll make sure to link all of those down below. If you like this tutorial and have any more questions, let me know down below and I will see you on the next one.